Okay, welcome to this episode of, uh, what are we called? Three Dudes in a Dock. That's the one. That, that is what it's called. What are we uh, talking about this week? Children underground. So Romanian uh, homeless kids. Let's get to it. Okay, so children underground. <laughs> what a crazy fucking story. Getting some subway. No, in the subway. In the subway. Yeah, they don't. Know. You think they know what subway is? I don't even think they know what a sandwich is. Maybe yeah. they have, like the concept of it. They might understand. But a foot long. Some old person was like, "Listen, in Soviet era Romania, we had. Uh, they probably didn't even have sandwiches. No." Fuck. They didn't have the two pieces Man, of bread. Before we get into this, it's it's interesting seeing something like this of like we watched this and then the other almost holy and you kind of forget and you don't really see in history documentaries of like with Cold War stuff of like all right the West was against so and then like all right we won. Like yeah, yeah, cool, we won. But then it's like what about all these countries and then all those people that like they literally woke up one day and then were like, Yeah, we're it's completely different. Like, good luck. And then a lot of these kids were in orphanage, right? So the orphanage, they just fucking opened their doors and were like, I don't, you're 10, go figure it out. That is yeah. essentially literally what happened. Yeah, so like, in, that's so fucking wild. It was quite a bit after the formation, though, of the Soviet Union in general, because that all happened in 1965. Like, the, the formation of the Romanian orphan crisis mm -hmm. was an act in 1964 to 5. Like, yeah, like uh, Consesco, I think his name was. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but okay. Yeah, he was the leader of Romania at the time and ruled with an iron fist, and it was absolutely draconian. So Jesus. his economics crippled the country, and his striving to create loyal citizens, like truly 1984 style, dirty, yeah. dirty indoctrination style yeah. uh, people. Um, he accidentally created an orphan crisis like the world's never seen before. So now, like, this is the outcome of yeah some shit from, like, the 60s. And when was this filmed? Like, 2000... 2001. Yeah, so, like... And so, in the lead-up to it, it kind of has, like, a little <sighs> blurb. It says uh, the, the leader that you were, that Christian was talking about, mm -hmm. um, basically, he Satan. wanted he wanted a, a bigger workforce, so he outlawed contraception and abortion. Yes. So people were just yeah. having kids that they didn't want. Yeah. yeah. He also implemented a pseudo um, menstruation police. The fuck? To make sure that you were having kids or at least attempting to. Jesus. Whoa. Yeah. There was a department that would go around and just interview. Well, not interview, but I guess they would take census and record, record uh, women in their cities. Hey, you fucking. Yeah, basically. You fuck for, you fuck for us. <laughs> Oh man! We fuck for Romania. Fuck yeah. for the party. Yeah. One day, like, what do we do? We have no food. Why would we bring more people into this? Like, shut up. That's exactly. So, it. like, when you mentioned Subway, like, the one family, um, when they're talking to them, he's like, "Yeah, like, we get twenty thousand, whatever their currency is, twenty thousand in alimony. That can't even buy you a loaf of bread. Mm -hmm. That's fucking insane." Yeah, their their currency is yeah. like, I can't even understand that value. Yeah. Because when, like, they were hustling, the kids were like, yeah, we make, like, you can get, like, a thousand or something yeah. a day. Like, do you think there's street kids in Western countries that are making a thousand dollars a day? What? Well, converted. I mean, if your yeah. Cokes cost two thousand of those currency, well, then a thousand dollars isn't that far-fetched. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. That's true. Like, that'd be okay. like them hustling for a buck. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. A, a lot of times through the documentary, like, uh, the translation, it... The caption says, uh, "Oh, you owe me five thousand. You owe me five thousand. Yeah. So I guess yeah. that yeah, that's okay. probably like around ten dollars, five or yeah. ten dollars. Yeah. Okay. And like, uh, God, what do these kids do in their spare time? Do they like play street games and like play soccer, or are they like organize like Lord of the Flies and like try and get their life so, back together, or what do they? Uh, you know what this reminds me of? It, like Oliver Twist, like the Artful Dodger. <laughs> what? Like Cri Christina." was like the leader like she reminded me like the artful dodger like she's like the one uh, okay she disguised herself to to look like a, a dude you're talking yeah. about the actual like the dickens novel yeah i'm so sorry to say that i've never read it neither have i 
But I, I know, you I know. Just pull that reference there, yeah. like you fucking were a Dickens. Well, I know. So the, let's talk about that. I know the gist All I know is they, the little Oliver wants to eat soup, and then he wants to get a little more, and they're like, "No, you can't. that's Oliver Twist, right?" Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. The soup. Okay. I know cool. the gist of it. Like, there's like he lives in an orphanage, and yeah, he so. wants more soup, and they say no. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, and, man. Main and plot line over. Yeah. yeah. There's like a, a group of street kids and. The one, like the leader, is the Artful Dodger. Okay. They're a bunch of like okay. street thieves. Uh, and and then, then Oliver gets more soup from them? But, then, or he's in debt for soup because of them? Well, I think he joins them. Oh, like, yeah. The Artful Dodger like brings him in or whatever. Make my own soup. But So like some literary um, person's going to just tear us a new one because we're probably butchering the storyline of Oliver Twist. I think anybody who has laid eyes on the book would, could do this. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, but that's kind of like what it reminded me of, like this Christina girl who okay. pretends to be a boy so she doesn't get beat up and people listen to her, head shaved, <sighs> and sounds like a, a male yeah. when she I, talks. Yeah. I really Cigarettes mean, and I, what they do in their spare time, I think, has something to do with that. Yeah, I, I definitely thought that that was uh, a male mm. at first. Yeah, um, 100%. So she's kind of like the king or queen of all the like, little leader. street kids. She's a great leader. Yeah. Yeah. So like she, she she's calls like, herself the boss. She's the rat. She's Mom the rat man. king. Yeah. She's yeah. the rat king. Is that offensive to say? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Just because they're yeah, so, actually king of rats. I don't know. Yeah. See, the one thing that would have been sick if she had like ten of them. And like these are my little rat buddies. Yeah. They go out and like get food for me. I'm Enrico, like, Rico, Fabio, Gusto. Yeah. Attack. Go go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And Ratatouille is based off my life. Yeah. Like, holy <laughs> shit. That's why I shaved my hair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought it was Paris, but I guess yeah. it's Romania. Huh. And, uh, like, all these kids, they are huffing what is called Orlac, which is like a silver paint. It's meant to refinish the inside of your ovens, I believe. Really? It's a yeah. high temperature yeah. paint. Yeah, we yeah. it's like an industrial yeah. paint. So, But she's the only one I don't ever see doing it. They, yeah, you never see her on camera, at least, to do it. But I, yeah. I'm pretty sure she says that uh, all of those kids. Yeah, yeah and she repeated alive. it. She was like, "All the kids do it," and like all, all of them. Yeah. So maybe she doesn't include herself. That's why she makes the point a couple of times. I am the Rat King. Because she never says that she yeah. does it. She never shows herself doing it on camera, and then she says, "All the kids do it." Yeah. So. I don't know if she yeah. actually does it or not. Yeah. That's how I take advantage of them because they're high out of their mind. And some of them fucking were. I yeah. saw a Charles Manson documentary and he inspired me. That's what she's thinking. But yeah, so she's she's badass, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like So yeah. You don't like, want to fuck with her. No, man. Like the difference between her at sixteen and any almost any American I would say. I say almost because I'm certain Holy. there are some uh, nasty neighborhoods that could produce kids like this. Absolutely. Right? But for like for the most part, Whew. I bet you that that 16 year old has the mindset and the body of like a 37 year old yeah yeah man yeah if you drop that girl into like a uh, suburban high school and oh. then you just be like hey Susie, what's your like what are you freaking out about today and then like this girl will tell her story and then the teacher would be like wow you've lived more of a life than i have like yeah. holy shit yeah or like someone goes to ripping her and then she would just have like the like well, all right I'm gonna fuck you up now. And there's one part in it, it doesn't give any kind of context or but there's uh it looks like an older street kid and looks like they may be mentally handicapped, maybe yeah. like kind of wailing. Yeah all dressed in black. And yeah. she's like, Get the fuck out of here, get yeah. get out of here and like forcing he's like she's like, Get me the stick. Yeah. <laughs> Grab yeah. the stick and like it's just like forcing this person out. I Again, there was no context. I don't know. Hey, I, just I don't from even a, think she a, hit him either. No. She just had it in her hand. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's she said, and you only ever see her hit anyone once. Yeah. Um, sure. But uh, she said she was, you know, the kids that I'm the boss of. She was. I don't hit them. I don't beat them. Yeah. Um, but then at the end, when she's living in this abandoned construction site, she's like, "They think I'm crazy. I'm not right in the head because if I start fighting." I don't stop until someone pulls me off. Yeah. And I think she, she, she also makes killed them, people. <laughs> uh, she may have let them die. I don't know if she would have killed people yet. Dude, if you beat someone up and then let them die, isn't that killing them? They're just like, ah, oh, they didn't, I didn't. 
Well, I mean, let them die as in, like, you see someone coughing in the street, and yeah. they're obviously... Oh, yeah, but there's them. nothing they can... Like, why the fuck? They're not going to call the fucking ambulance. Why not? Uh, why would they? They know they're not going to come. I guess. In this place Dude, they said that, like, the cops, that they're like, everyone beats us up. Yeah, I mean, if you're being a shitty little delinquent kid, but if... Well, yeah. But the police, they could, they could should be like, hey, this person is, like, abusing me, and then the police seem like they're like, eh, well, but don't have paint, 10-year-old. And you're all, like, what the fuck? They're all doing legal shit, too, right? Like they're, yeah. Yeah. Technically, so, it's illegal for them. Yeah, maybe that's why the police are just like, I don't want to arrest everybody, so I'm just not going to go. <laughs> just kick them in the ribs for six yeah. minutes. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> Another thing that took me back was that, like, you said they live in a subway and they're like, oh, like an abandoned subway. I'm like, no, this is a fully functioning yeah. subway. And then like people just walking by and like. Pff. But I mean, like you see homeless people in the subway. In yeah. Yeah. But dude, do you imagine you kids. saw like a gang of kids? Yeah. I'd Every be like, day. Every day. what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you oh. would be so intent on just trying to keep your own shit together that yeah. that's just one of the sad facets of your environment. Yeah. yeah. And then like the the kids that like were with families that look like they had their shit together that are walking through the subway of like they're looking at kids their own age. Like what the fuck are those kids thinking? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Like they're they live a fucking oh. rough life. Yeah, like, that country is fucking crazy. Yeah. This was a really sad one. But in in the crazy part is like the documentary. I, it's crazy to me that the documentary crew following these kids, like just sit there and film while the kids get the shit kicked out of them by yeah. adults. It's kind of like a nature documentary yeah. where you're just like, we can't be involved. We just have to let things play out. Right. But yeah, the one scene where right. that guy's like beating the shit. Out, yeah, yeah. You're like, this is. Yeah. <sighs> and like, yeah how, how tough would that be as a, as a documentary crew? Just sit back and be like, yeah. Okay. Well, it is what it Especially is. So, if you're like <laughs> like a PA or someone where you're like you're not like you're not a camera guy, where you're like I can't fucking put the camera down, but if you're just like sitting there taking yeah. notes, I'd be like, we can we go do something? And yeah. they're like, no, just take shots about like this is when this guy beats this kid up, and like, is he gonna fucking kill the kid? Because well, like I don't want to see that. There's like yeah, the one scene where uh, the one girl Macarena is mm. uh, is crying and doing the somebody, Macarena. She yeah. cries a lot throughout the, the movie. Yeah, um, I mean, she's probably quite yeah. mentally disabled at yeah. this point. Um, she was yeah. the definitely the heaviest user of yeah. Oralac. This uh, this adult comes in, like, grabs her and says, stop crying, and like, just starts beating the shit out of yeah. her. Yeah. And the camera just rolls. Like, dude, why like, don't you just get on the train and leave? Like, why are you yeah. like, no. Unless he worked at one of, like, the little stands. Yeah, like, he the, probably did. The vendor or something. He yeah. just got sick of hearing her cry. How fucked up is that, too, that the vendors, like, kind of take advantage of the kids, but oh, kind of yeah. give them money, but then the kid's, like, standing around, and he's like, hey, get out of here. Yeah. Go back down there. Go stand over there. Yeah, go get the fuck out of here. Yeah. But, like, if we have any heavy shit, you guys can carry it, because, like, I don't really want to carry the heavy shit. So now, speaking of Macarena, like, like Christian said, she was... It looks like she was the heaviest user Macarena. of the yeah. huffing the paint. Macarena, Macarena, so at one Macarena. point she talks about uh, how she has a twin sister also named Macarena who's at a school and her parents like, do you think that's just like a, a delusional fantasy that she's kind of concocted in her head that, you know, there's the exact copy of her at a school. A good and, copy of her. Yeah. And is happy. I had never thought about that. I think she saw us and was like, this is my life. In the moment, I 100% believed it. But now that you say this, yeah. that... Yeah, that, makes, that, yeah, that is a good not? point, man. It's, it's just weird that they're both named Macarena. Oh, well, I assume... Because Macarena's not a real name anyways. That's yeah. a nickname. Which right. gives credence to the idea that this is a made-up person because she potentially doesn't remember her own name. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. people just... Even the social workers, even they call her Macarena. Yeah. You would like to think that if that was a true story and the family had the resources to make have one of their kids in a private school that like their other 10 year old they're like yeah we tried well, and she said she's not from uh romania she said she's from another country but well, she yeah, never I mean, says where right no yeah well, what the? Well, unless she doesn't know where or ukraine <laughs> yeah yeah probably yeah. <laughs> i got away from that crazy guy that tried to kidnap me that was a really common occurrence though is for families to have children but to have to almost be mandated because of these implementations yeah. through Conseisco's yeah. team that they keep having kids and they have to just give them away. So I guess, yeah, that's another thing of, yeah, with that is a possibility yeah. of that happening of like, maybe they did have one 
with and the then fact the that, other one, they're just like, hey. With or the fact that was, she knows where she is. Yeah, maybe they yeah. were literally twins. Yeah. yeah. So they yeah. didn't expect Fuck. it. They only had the money for an extra one. Yeah. But now they got it's two. crazy because either way that we figure out this equation, it's still it's sad as fuck at the end. You're yeah. not like, oh no, yeah. there's like a, like this could be a happy ending for her. You're like, no, nah, she's just high as shit and like this person isn't real or this person is real and they just forgot about her. Like, oh my God. So yeah. speaking of this diff- poor kid, the different, uh, I, I was going to call them characters, but I guess they're not characters. They're Subjects. real people. Subjects. Participants, uh, rather. My my favorite kid in this whole documentary was a kid named Mihai. I think he was <laughs> twelve. He was like the little, the littlest one, right? Yeah, like the little, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, like he was like to me like the most like put together. He still did like it, it didn't show him really huffing it, but it showed him with the bag that the kids were pour- pouring the paint into to give it to him. He's just the dealer. Yeah. yeah, just to clarify, that Oralac stuff, um, they would just pour it into like a little like half a plastic bag. grocery bag, yeah. and then they would huff it, but they would be so zonked out of their mind off this, they would spill and it would get yeah. all over the place. So these kids are just walking around like they have some kind of futuristic barbecue sauce well, that made Yeah, they must have like the crazy well, shit going on in their mind. Well, so, you know, just the way they look because their faces are covered in oh, silver yeah, paint. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's, it, it's that's very common thing. with that. So there's a movie. Ah, oh, fuck. I forget what movie it was. A, a dramatized movie, obviously. but Or maybe it was uh, Gotham, uh, the TV show. But there's like a, a group of... That like, means not real, Tyler. <laughs> there's a group of... Uh, of like this street gang that like has silver paint Orlac. all over their face, um, so it's like a common. Oh, yeah. oh I have seen other documentaries before. W- was it um, the new Mad Max mu- movie? Yeah, Fury, that's exactly yeah, what it is. Fury Road. Wow, that's really sad that yeah. they probably took that from this documentary. Yeah, I have seen other documentaries though where like Eastern European kids or Euro- oh. like Eastern European homeless people huffing paint, and it yeah. was this Orlac shit for for sure because it'd be like, oh, they. They acted the same way, yeah. and like you can see how easy it is to get. But yeah, so back to Mihai. So like this kid, he they're interviewing him, asking him why he left, and he said, "Well, my parents drink, and my dad beats me, yeah. So I don't want to be there." He's like, "I feel sad for my mother and my my sister. Yeah, I want to be there, but yeah, uh, bec- if as long as my dad's there, I'm not. My gonna dad be there. beats me. Yeah. <laughs> so then they interview his dad, and dick. his dad's like, "I never laid a hand on. Him. I I didn't do anything." But then at one point says, I forget what the exact uh, line is, but basically says, yeah, I fucking beat him. Yeah. So like, so what? I used my belt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's not a beating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it was, it was something like a little bit more subtle, but like reading between lines, you're definitely like, oh yeah. Was that, it. was that the guy too who, oh shit. We just had a terrorist attacked by Kim Jong-un. <laughs> he fell off God the wall. damn. Fucking suicide. Was that the guy who mentioned something about like for sure his daughter's still a virgin? No, no, no. that's Anna and uh, Marina. Okay, uh, that was another time when. But, yeah. Okay. So, so different family. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. My my favorite part of Mihai though, like the kid is like somewhere between between ten and twelve. Yeah, I think. So. Yeah. He just looks like a little kid. He looks like yeah, you know, just a tiny little kid. He's got like be a little Gap model or some shit. Yeah, again, he's like the most like, well nourished looking yeah, he's got like a little collar shirt and shit yeah. like a little polo yeah. shirt but, and and he's he, he seems smart because he said you know i i, I don't want to beg i want to make my money i help them unload trucks yeah um a little entrepreneur yeah and he's like you know someday i want to have a house of my own i want to have kids like none of the other kids had that kind of coherent interview um, no no absolutely 100 percent. other than maybe because christina the uh, yeah the leader but uh the best part of me hi and as sad as this whole documentary was, the part I loved the most was he's sitting there um, doing his interview. And he's just sitting there. He has a smoke. Yeah, man. He's just smoking a cigarette. Yeah. And he just looks like a 45-year-old dude. Yeah. And he's just like, yeah. Like, if you look at, at an interview of, like, someone smoking while they're interviewed, like, he just... And looks like Hunter S. Thompson. Yeah, he's just so comfortable. They're just like, yeah, yeah of course I'm going to do this. People listening can't see me, but, like, just sitting there, like... Finger straight up, smoke in his mouth, and he pulls yeah. it away and talks, and he just like he like he's a forty five year old dude just chilling out talking. Yeah, oh, man, like, <laughs> second uh, nature. Yeah, you're just gonna hear him like open a beer, like just as that guy's. <laughs> yeah, well then like there's like he's walking down the street in one shot, and he has like a cigarette in his hand. Kids like 
in 12 years old is the max like yeah and there's no way i think he might have even been 10 he said yeah yeah he gave yeah. his age, he was pretty but, little yeah as he was walking down the street in one of these shots um there was no particular reason for this either but this kid is just kind of a singer and a dancer he's like yeah and he's dancing around yeah doing some twirls and like snapping his fingers yeah and when he's on the train he's doing the same he's like yeah uh yeah he's stoked he's going home he's going along with the beat of the song like he's making up his own lyrics and again like he just seems like the most youthful like he seems like a kid still, not just some like zonked out zombie. Yeah, yeah. Um, like he hasn't been underground for six years. Yeah, <laughs> sunlight. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, he just like at the same time the most youthful and like childlike, as well as the most mature. Mm. Yeah, that's however that works. Yeah, through necessity, I think. Yeah, <laughs> he's mature because yeah. his dad beats him. Yeah, you'd be he's like, "What kid. was your childhood like?" He's like, uh, "I had it for like six months, I think." And yeah, then, I think he, he said he ran away when he was like eight or nine. What the fuck? He, he had ran away a few times. Yeah, yeah. By that I, time. Like the man. first time, I think he said he was eight. When yeah, he, the first time he ran away. Did you guys even like a while. eight-year-old? You guys, would you even like understand that concept? Of running away? Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, but like, I want to run away from home. And live in a subway. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Like your, your home life town. is sure. so fucked up that you're like, I got to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Not because it was fucked up, but like just out of sheer yeah. curiosity. Like, could yeah. I do it? Absolutely. I thought about it when I was around eight. Not around eight, but like oh. all yeah. the time. You're just like, because you see examples of things like this and you hear stories. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. No, I mean like just being i guess more so being put in their position when yeah. you're eight of but, like but we would never think oh, of like fuck. how we would survive yeah and how yeah like, where were, where the fuck we're gonna we just like yeah every kid's wanted to run away right well, the thought yeah. goes like oh i need to run away and then you're like well, okay where do i go uh nowhere yeah. all yeah. right i'm not going anywhere yeah. yeah and then you don't run away yeah but that's different in a small town though they were in the heart of a city Oh, yeah. They grew up well, in a small town, though, so they were like, they, I got to get they, to the big city. Yeah, they left to come to Bucharest, right? True. Mostly. The paint in the small yeah. town sucks. <laughs> yeah, it's more expensive. Got to get there. that good Bucharest paint. Yeah. It's fresher. Like, woo woo. Yeah, so continue going with, like, the, the different subjects. So there was two siblings, Anna and uh, I think it was Mariana, or Marina? Marina. It was a boy. I so I can... I'll see if it, I can. It was Anna and Marina. Get the list here. So Anna left, then she came back, and according to her parents, stole her younger brother. Yeah. To bring him to live on the street, and then he just wants to do whatever she does. Mm-hmm. I pretty much believe that. Yeah. For sure. I mean, I don't know why I wouldn't. But. Yeah. So I know Anna was ten for sure, yeah. and so her brother Marina was a little bit younger. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the one that Mitch was brought up, and the father says, "Yeah, I bathed her. I know she's still a virgin. I know." She hasn't been raped on yeah, the street. Trust me. Yeah. Yeah. Which I was, was fucking a, boiling a very, at that point. Yeah. Which was a very weird and disgusting comment. Yeah. Yeah. She was eight and her younger brother. Yeah. I think during the movie, though, she was 10. Okay. They, they ask her what the, uh, the scene where she's in the doctor's office uh, and she's asking for medicine yeah. uh, to help with the ho- hoarseness of her voice. And uh, the nurse lady's like, nope. I'm not giving you medicine until you're off drugs. Yeah. Because it's a waste. Yeah. Very reminiscent of Pastor Crocodile. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Not so, very reminiscent of Kurt Cobain, though. No. <laughs> all of them childhood drug abusers with yeah. terrible home lives, but I guess not all of us can be super famous. That's right. And then get that easy ticket. Well, speaking of super famous, so the kid I was talking about, Mihai, his last name was Trudeau's, and... There was actually He's related to our yeah. current <laughs> prime minister. Th- He's the forgotten Trudeau. Yeah, it's like a Kennedy, bro. The <laughs> one Kennedy sister. They just lobotomied her because <laughs> she was acting up. Jesus, this is Mihai Trudeau. He's a Romanian <laughs> orphan. Yeah, man. Trudeau's yeah. dad got around, son. Yeah. We should have. So did his mom. She got freaky so, with the Rolling Stones, allegedly. There was a uh, an ex like prime minister, or president, or whatever Romania has uh, named Mihai Trudeau's. Yeah. Uh, same name and everything. So Interesting. Because I, okay. tried, I tried Googling him after uh, I watched the movie to see, you know. <laughs> You're like, no way, he's president yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> well, man, this kid got his shit together. <laughs> Fuck yeah. All that singing and dancing, he's like yeah. Nixon. He can only talk for 20 minutes because yeah. then he like kind of zonks out because all the paint that he had when he was 10. Yeah, to see if there's some kind of update on him. And all I brought up was Mihai Trudos, the... Uh, the oh, okay. The... 
political official. And so, it was in like the 60s, right? Or yeah, something? He, no, he was born in the 60s. So oh, was okay. Like, he was like 53 right now, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. In searching around about uh, this doc, I found a comment on a YouTube video. I think it was a copy of this movie. Anyways, there was an, a small update on oh, yeah? some of these kids that they could possibly find any information on after. Oh, cool. This person said that they had seen a friend of theirs share a post from Mihai. Like, it was in 2011. And he was looking for a job. Oh, was, sick. Uh, still on his way, still on the street, but yeah. he was yeah. looking for a job and he's uh, actively kind of still the same person. Yeah. It sounds like at least in this small blurb that he had uh, right. copied into this comment. So reads like the same kind of person. Yeah. At the end of this documentary, it kind of, like, it was like one year later after everything. So it kind of gave a couple updates. And then, you know, again, this was back in 2001. Mm -hmm. um, updates on when at that point, Mihai was living in like a, um, like a shelter, I guess. Yeah, he was doing like schoolwork and yeah, stuff. Yeah, he had grown his hair out. And uh, yeah, yeah, killing it. So he had a couple different haircuts. He had that like bowl haircut through most of the movie. And then when he went to live with that woman and her baby, in like in the construction site? No, it wasn't that one. Wasn't the construction site? He went abandoned warehouse thing. Yeah, it was a woman and a baby just randomly there. Yeah, yeah, and I do then, recall that. Yeah, so then he uh, he shaved his head except for like the front. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, like his bangs. I wonder what's up with yeah. that. Why do they? Is that? I don't, I don't know. know. I thought that was a like a prison thing. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I don't know. And then uh, and then he went to live at the construction site, and Christina said like. Some of the boys like beat him up pretty bad. Like, she said they dropped him from like the second story thing, and he went. Yeah, he like almost died. And he said he was in a coma. Yeah, but but yeah. then it showed him after at this shelter, and he had like regular normal length hair, and uh, he was doing yeah, school work, and he was showed him walking through the, uh, the schoolyard or whatever oh, man. with a cigarette, <laughs> still dancing with yeah. the tune. Like now I smoke two bags a day because I fucking was thrown from an eight story building. Yeah. And somehow survived. Those uh, kinds of things don't happen to normal yeah. people. It was only the second story, man. <laughs> it was only into a little bit of rusty rebar. Get over it, dude. Yeah. Like just the general toughness of everyone. Cause even like the adults that are interacting with these kids are like in the subway and they're every interaction it seems that these kids have with an adult, the adult right away is like, get your fucking shit together. Yeah. Like, well, imagine seeing a homeless 10-year-old and we're like, fuck you, dude, get your shit together. Yeah. So there may be a political <laughs> um, reason for that. Okay. This uh, ex-leader, who was leader for 26 years. Oh, okay, years, that would make sense. And, like, the society just fucking hates kids because you're forced to have them. No, well, no, not at all. They feel bad, but it's also mandated. So he outlawed the study of social sciences, services, and psychology. Ah, okay, yeah, that's huge. So if someone says these kids need more personal attention, because even in orphanages, which I think he set up around 700, uh, in, in his time, because if they're institutionalized, they're fed, they're mm -hmm. hygienic for the most part, they're uh, well-educated, they just simply have a massive emotional void. Yeah, they'll so, just go from that to like a workhouse, so you just shut the fuck up and work. Yeah, that's yeah. the idea, but so in doing this, um, it, it had to be that psychology was put on the back burner because active clinical psychology at that time 1965 that was like really burgeoning it was mm -hmm. a huge legitimate study at that point right so uh that evidence was almost guaranteed to show that in non-human animals and obviously humans this kind of institutionalizing of kids mm -hmm. at that particular age absolutely fucks them up so <laughs> when an adult now in Romania or even 20 years ago, cause this was a while ago now mm -hmm. at this point, mm -hmm. um, they see a kid with problems. They don't look at it as a psychological thing. They look at it as a strictly black and white medical issue. So right. they're yeah. issued antibiotics when they go to these orphanages yeah. and they're given lots of rest and, uh, care, just not literally, um, emotional care <laughs> and, and other, other kinds of like psychological care yeah it's strictly biological well and talking about these kids being tough like the one like we we're talking about anna and marina um anna looked like she's had her nose broken a few times like yeah. she had a super like swole like 
wide bridge. Those are yeah. fighters' features. Yeah, she was a yeah. hockey player. She's a goon. Yeah, if you, if you yeah, look, put these kids on fucking skates or like uh, teach them football. If you look at a, a UFC fighter, they yeah, have like that wide kind of uh, swollen bridge. Yeah, and that's just what. And at uh, one point, you see her get kicked in the face. <laughs> Yeah, this is that was also, such a fucking hard thing to watch. Yeah, when she gets kicked in the face, her brother sleeping. Yeah, whole it, time. Didn't she's freaking out, yelling, and he's just what? out. I'm and, like, damn. And she cried a lot too. Like the one time, like there, she wanted to go to some park where there's like a swimming uh, yeah. pool. Yeah, and they went to the wrong park, and she's just fucking losing her mind. Yeah. I mean, they're all kids high. You think yeah. they're be- they're good with directions? <laughs> yeah, or receiving bad information. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, yeah, it's just bad news. It's just like a an emotional maturity, right? Like, well, and it said with the the huff and paint shit. Like, what it dumbs down, it yeah. makes you like really sensitive. Yeah, and then like super angry. So, so something didn't go her way, and she just fucking yeah. lost it. Yeah. That's a bad combination. Being in their place, like without genuine adult supervision and yeah. attention and care, because that stuff's really important to yeah. growing people. But also taking a drug at um, massive doses and very yeah. frequently that directly affects those things as well. Sure, so it yeah. like compounds. Well, especially like when your mind is still everything growing, developing. Right? It's yeah. not even just your mind developing, yeah. right? It's like your whole yeah. body is yeah. still growing. Because this so. Orlac specifically gives you uh, bone marrow issues yeah. later on. No doubt. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Well, because we were looking it up. When we yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, also the thing when, like, if you huff it enough times, your lungs uh, oh, it want... Dri- it dry, the paint dries on your lungs? Yeah, but also yeah. your body or something happens where the paint substitutes oxygen, so your lungs try and work off the paint, well, and then you just like yeah. literally suffocate. Yeah, so I read something where like you're you're inhaling it and the paint like feels yeah. dry on your lungs and kind of oh, seal your lungs. So you dude, they got like sick chrome lines. Yeah. That's lined lungs. Yeah. They got nickel plated. Shit. That's some yeah. gangster shit. Yeah, grills. So, so you can't, yeah, you can't get oxygen into your lungs or enough oxygen. That's incredible, yeah. man. An autopsy on these kids is as heartbreaking as it would be. Yeah, would be <laughs> you could do it in the middle of the shocking. night and like check this out. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like the amazing part about this is, I mean, unless they just covered, or like, glossed over and didn't uh, mention, it, but you never get any updates about any of these kids dying. Yeah. Out there, which is fucking during filming. Yeah, yeah. which yeah. is fucking unreal. Like you'd think. I don't know how I could have taken that, man. If like, you just see some kid and then he just falls over. But even like almost holy, like you, you see. A oh kid yeah, die, you see a kid. Yeah, that was there. fucked up. And these kids have no help. Yeah. Like, at least Pastor Crocodile was there to try and help them and get them off, right? Yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> Try and get, get, them, get off. them off the drugs. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> this is for God. This is for God. Oh, God. This is for God. Put your hand away. <laughs> um, yes. The crocodile's uh, here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, at least there was someone there trying to help these kids. But these kids had like Big very difference. little help. Yeah. And, um, yeah, they had. To, that's I. I think I mentioned something. Or Christian mentioned something when we watched it. Of like, yeah, there's got to be kids just flopping fucking like dying all the time and it's lord of the fly shit so like these kids have to kill each other like all the time even by axe push them downstairs yeah oh well, uh, like the one the one kid says i'm gonna drop you over that railing yeah at yeah. one point <laughs> stuff like that yeah, why wouldn't they and then like you're yeah so yeah, like, <laughs> the one fuck the you're one, just broken yeah. right now man these kids <laughs> like these poor fucking kids the one point when they're huffing paint out on the street and um Macarena drops like her paint bottle and yeah, this kid yeah. or she picks it up and the kid's like, Oh, that's mine. I yeah, dropped it. Yeah. And she's like, Oh, oh, okay. And hands it to him. Yeah. And then he's like, No, ah, I thought the, I thought the I, little kid like took it out of her pocket and then it fell. Oh, it could have. Could have yeah, happened. Yeah, I think that I don't think it fell out naturally. I, like I thought, think she, he, I thought she was trying to put it back. He tried to mouth. like paint pocket it. See how I paint pocket? You like yeah. that? And, and nice. then, yeah, he's freaking out, saying, "No, that's mine. That's mine. I dropped it out of my pocket." Yeah. And then yeah. she's like, "Oh, okay," and gives it to him. He's like, "Ha! Ah, I tricked you." It's like, yeah. How high do you have to be to not like fucking like put all that together? Also, <laughs> how dumb and high is that kid? Where like that kid just robbed a bank, and the bank gave him the money, and then was like, "I just robbed you." Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, "Uh, okay." 
Like, yeah. why wasn't the Macarena just like, I'm going to beat the shit out of you now? Cause, I think like, she was too high to ever beat the shit out of That kid was quick, anyone. too. That little, that little mouse was... Yeah. I, was he the one, like, when Anna was try, was crying about the park, licking the, the ball? Like, she just had to let it go. The, did, do you remember that? Like, So they're sitting licking on the park the bench, and he, the one kid had that red, like, bouncy ball. Why the fuck was he licking a bouncy ball? I feel like I do remember, yeah. but at the same time, so he, no, I don't. Too busy jacking off. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Uh, <laughs> this podcast has just gone to shit. Yeah. What the <laughs> fuck? Canceled. We of start all with. documentaries to do that to, man. Um, like, come on. But yeah, no. So that's what I Anna's uh, Anna's crying about them being in the wrong park, and the kid's like, uh, "I'm just gonna go play with my ball," and like it shows him, and he's just sitting there like staring like. Straightforward, yeah, and just like licking the ball, and yeah, it's like it's just like it's one of those like big red like dodgeball balls. Yeah, not, yeah. not even dodge. Like you know, if you go to Toys R Us or like some toy store, and there's like the big yeah um, yeah the thin of, rubber yeah. yeah basket of rubber balls. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was like one of those one. things. He's just like staring, just licking it and turning it around. That's fantastic. Also, yeah. these kids have literally nothing. So they're like, yeah. where the fuck did you get this ball from? Yeah. That cartoon like, in. Uh, <laughs> almost holy of the crocodile the um, that kid who jumps down the well yeah he's just like why would you do that don't you have anything better to do <laughs> nope nope <laughs> we're in romania of course not <laughs> not today they don't even have cartoons in romania so <laughs> <laughs> no, they do but they're really old um yeah. it'd be interesting to check out like budapest would be fucking cool to go to man bucharest or bucharest yeah, sorry so budapest is in different hungary. country sorry <laughs> where is budapest hungary yeah uh, Right beside. I wonder one, how they're doing. That's one thing I know. It's my geography. I heard they're hungry. Mm. <laughs> You're such a yeah. guest. <laughs> um, God, I'm going to go now. Yeah, yeah but I, I wonder what like visiting Bucharest would be like. Like, Yeah, with money, decent. Yeah. Subway I mean, system seems legit. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like the people walking by, like, and again, this was 20 years ago, but yeah. the people walking by seemed like well off, like. They just seem like socially yeah. fucked up, but yeah. Yeah. That would be a weird country to go to, man, because like there's parts that are probably super nice, and yeah. then the drop off is just fucking. Right. So you're like, this. I'm not having fun here. Like this is, this is not a happy place. Yeah, definitely. Also, it's weird how there's no like graffiti really anywhere. There was some. There was. They're huffing all that paint. Yeah, 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 that's true. Like be art, be artistic. They're not doing art with it. Oh. There's two kinds of artists out there, I guess. <laughs> How do you use the paint? Like, what? You can do something <laughs> yeah. with it? Oh, well, yeah, I use paint. I use yeah. paint all the time. I'm painting a silver image in, inside my body. I will be and beautiful on the inside. So, you think when they, like, throw up, they'd have, like, silver? Oh, God, I hope so. Fuck, these kids need to go to raves, because rave kids would be like, you're awesome, man! And, like, Romania does, like, border on Ukraine as well. So it's like... They're the same kids. Probably, yeah. That is where that girl came from, the crocodile man. Oh, yeah. possibly, definitely, allegedly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's true. And it's right on the uh, the Black Sea as well. I was thinking it was close to Croatia. Yeah, you gotta call it something else, man. That's offensive. <laughs> I was thinking it was close to Croatia. And my brother uh, for work went to Croatia for a little bit Ooh. and said it's like fucking unreal. It's amazing there. So I was yeah, like, well, cool. how close? But it it's on the. Croatia is on the uh, Adriatic Sea, and uh, that's where they like. I think that's where, like, the Soviet higher ups went to, uh, like, went to uh, vacation. Yeah, so it's like the Adriatic Sea. I goes believe. Like Cro- Croatia, Bosnia, Serbia, Romania. Yeah, well, one of those four, are, I think, maybe doing okay. That's like the smoker section in the high school parking lot. Yeah, Bosnia. Oh, yeah, that's a tough spot over there. Don't go over there. <laughs> You so, stick around here with these new yeah. bus drivers. You're lucky it's not the 90s. <laughs> so that kind of just reminds me of a, a line. Like we were talking about when Anna got uh, kicked in the face. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, she yeah. Walk, the, the girls walk away. He's like, look at her walk away acting so cool. I was like, yeah. you just got kicked in the face and you just called her cool? Yeah. Like That was know. a sick <laughs> move. <laughs> like, Good kick, <laughs> asshole. Yeah. Obviously, Are those Burks? That really hurt. <laughs> 
obviously she didn't mean like that. She meant like, oh, like she's not even like freaking yeah. out. Like she's like, look at this guy. He doesn't even care. Yeah, calm, yeah, cool, collected. Like, but yeah, she just yeah. got boot, booted in the face, and that was I found it, like a weird thing to say. Like we said earlier, with like they got lost going to this park, so they're clearly not good with directions. But like they're obviously not super witty, <laughs> yeah. which would have been awesome if like what's his face is sitting there smoking and then he has a little huff or two and then he just is dropping bombs on everyone yeah. like just ripping on them in the corner yeah. and that kid's like me high yeah his fingernails must be fucking razor blades yeah like when uh on is freaking out about being in the, in the wrong park and she starts like blaming him yeah and he's like well i'm just gonna cut myself and he's just like just like scratching. No, he eye. has he has something that I think. No, I think that was just his fingernails. No, I thought I saw him holding. Something. I thought okay. I, yeah, I thought he was like a pop tab or something. Yeah, okay, a little I'm, stone. Thought, wouldn't it have to be like really healthy to have like really strong fingernails like that? You would yeah. if you just eat stones all day. <laughs> oh, me, yeah, okay. Lots of calcium. They're just they're just eating collagen. I eat limestone. <laughs> collagen yeah i just eat other kids fingers that's why i it's have supposed to be really good for you okay cool like, man for your like your teeth oh, everything collagen oh. yeah all right yeah. Mm. i'm gonna have that in my granola in the morning instead of yogurt yeah. do it up there you go yeah Sick. i just need to start doing all of that so. there you go what huffing the pain as well <laughs> you know what if i'm gonna start eating okay collagen okay. i'll start huffing paint too no, co collagen is actually good for you Oh, not like spoonfuls of it, you mean, but in small doses? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. In whole spoonfuls. Yeah, you can oh. do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Speaking of doing, having the paint, I don't know what website it was. I wish I saved it, but when Christian and I watched this, we were just looking up random information on I, it. I think I know what you're going to say. Dude, I think I, that comment? Was it like a message board? Yeah, 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 yeah. But the like, dude was just like, yo, I just, do you know when, anywhere I can find this? Yes. I just want to get high and watch this documentary. Oh, man. Christian and I were like, what the fuck? And yeah. then everything underneath was like, this isn't real. Like, yeah. are you, you're not, like, what, what yeah. is this? Yeah. yeah, that was great. So that was great. He says, like, I've put it on my bucket list to try huffing that or a lot. What the fuck do you think is on that guy's bucket list? Like, but uh, I'm going to, like, kill someone. The best part is, I don't know if I'll be out of jail long enough. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. To do this, though. Yeah. Oh, I think he will. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the longer we read a that. Couple minutes. Yeah. Exactly. He's got to find the oral leg. Yeah. Just get a P.O. box. I yeah. don't think they make it anymore, but there yeah. must be some around. Ma, <laughs> ma, there's going to be a box coming. Just put it in the back room. Yeah. Like, I feel like that was definitely a post, like, just fucking with people. I would hope it's a troll, but then again, the internet always wins. Oh, for and sure. then you're like, for sure, for sure, that is a possibility. But and I love, like, someone, like, a few things down. It's like, uh, I don't recommend inhaling these kinds of insolvents. Yeah. And then he replies with, like, a, it quotes the thing. Is it insolvents? No, this is paint. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, there's solvents in paint. <laughs> it, it's what keeps it thin. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. yeah. Like, don't huff petroleum. Like, I don't have petroleum. I have gasoline. Yeah. You're like, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. You obviously have gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> it's high test, so fuck off. <laughs> I know how to spell Harvard. I'm just cleaning out my engine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my God. That being my whole body. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. So there, there's some law that was passed that restricts this stuff. Because the one scene where the kid just goes into a hardware store. Yeah. And even the it. hardware store rips them off. But then the other person at the hardware store. No. So he, oh. he, he told the cashier he was going to get two bottles. Oh. And then I think they could only buy one or they only buy oh, one. Oh, okay. Buy okay. And the girl says, well... You paid for two, like, yeah. did you get your change back? And he's like, yeah. no. She's like, okay, we'll go ask him for your change back. But, like, just yeah. not so long. Like, they yeah. know they're being recorded. Yeah. And they're just like, uh, yeah, here's your paint. Yeah, imagine, like, a 10-year-old alcoholic just going into, a, a, like, a liquor store. Yeah. And they're like, actually, no, you only have enough money for one, two, six. You have two. You need to put one of them back. Yeah. And, by the way, here's your change. Have a good day, little buddy. Yeah. And, then like, just like, our next customer. Yeah. And like, whoa. And, like... Like going back to like the the camera crew and everything being there, like these adults that are like beating the shit out of these kids and like doing stuff, like they had to have seen the camera there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they just don't give a shit. No, no, they don't fucking yeah. care, man. Yeah, like these little subway bastards because they don't know what it means. Yeah, yeah, little street urchins. They're just like, who? What is that thing? They know where it could go, but they don't have any idea that yeah. it's gonna go there. Well, and especially <laughs> back in. 2000 right like, yeah i'm sure this was filmed over like 
it came out in 2001, so I, I'm sure they probably started filming in 98, especially because they had a one-year gap mm-hmm. um, between it. So, like, mm-hmm. a couple years before. So, late 90s, you know, internet is, like, YouTube hasn't taken off. And what is Blackberry you yeah. speak of? Nef- yeah. Netflix isn't a thing and all that We stuff. get DVD with Netflix. That's yeah. what that is, right? <laughs> There's no such thing as uh, like oh. filming high-quality cell phones. Yeah. 5G. Right. Do this shit now, and these kids all got, like, iPhone 11s and shit. Yeah, I mean, it's like, easy technology to get your hands on. There's more phones on the planet than literally any other technological yeah. device like that. Yeah. That's fucked up. So they for sure have cell phones. God damn it. That's like, crazy. It'd be interesting to see them revisit now, in, like, in the 2020, <laughs> well, in 2020. It's just one kid, like, everyone else is dead. No, I don't know. I don't know. They like, all died. Not even revisit the same kids, but just see how things have changed, if things yeah, have changed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, Romania is like bumping now. They got their shit together, or <laughs> I so don't they think were s- applying to join the United Nations. I yeah, think that was in 1996, and uh, they were approved, I believe, in 2006. Yeah, they started the process way back when. But they got uh, in. I think they did. <gasps> woo woo. Um, yeah, and woo woo. there was a U.S. study being done, uh, funded by Tulane University, and I think, um, uh, there was a, there was another one. I can't remember what it was. It may it may have been Harvard, um, the medical, Harvard. medical school. So uh, an American doctor, he was a neuroscientist, was looking to see uh, about the effects of early childhood maltreatment specifically with the social aspect well, that's a good place to go uh i mean conveniently yeah it is so they were informed that this was going on because it was kind of an international crisis at the mm-hmm. same time absolutely yeah and uh they got funding to go partially because um i was gonna say bill and melinda no bill and hillary clinton had a family foundation charity thing uh held at the White House, or I think it was maybe just a convention, and they were just there as uh, backers. But this scientist had his proposal, and he also uh, had this lead that this was going on, and he could go study these kids in Romania. Um, and he was he was backed in support by a group who was also at this convention uh, with the Clinton family. So they got their funding because of. Uh, Bill and Hillary Clinton hosting their little convention thing, and this group went on to study the effects of children kept in orphanages or uh, placement centers, they call them, in Romania. I think it's their soft political language. And kids who were put in genuine foster homes, because that was also something outlawed by Consesco. was foster care because it rehabilitates kids and those yeah. kids grow up in an independent family household yeah. which yeah. doesn't exactly make them loyal because their parents will tell them this country is poor <laughs> and here's yeah. the guy who did it so you're probably not going to be too loyal but if no. you're in an orphanage uh well that's all state funded shit so yeah. we can do everything we can do anything really yeah to them it's like a brave new world all over again not all over again but <laughs> yeah. man that's pretty cool that like Clinton can be homies with Epstein, but then just like, I'll help some Romanian kids. I mean, you have That's to cool. balance the scales. Yeah, for sure. You can't just fuck the kids. Yeah. I got to help these kids. <laughs> <laughs> that's they're, crazy. They're hurting and I know it. But yeah, but that's cool that, yeah, they, they're in the UN. That's got to really help them. Yeah. So this, this was a part of it though, is that, um, that study, I th- think it's called the Bucharest papers or the Bucharest report anyways uh done by network research I think was what the group was calling themselves these uh Harvard studiers I think they're Harvard I should probably stop saying that name but they changed the political landscape of Romania because after that came out I think in 98 or or earlier uh, Consesco was pulled out of power and he was murdered by firing squad. Whoa. Him and his entire family. Whoa, like the government did it? Like I don't know about Russian that. Revolution style? It may have just been a complete ousting. Yeah. Just a coup? I don't, yeah, I don't remember. We should look it up, but uh, I don't remember exactly Fuck yeah, that's who shot him. But yeah, his whole family was uh killed by firing squad. I mean that's kind of intense with the whole family thing, but Yeah. And then the Department of Health uh, split into a lot of different places, but they 
created the Department of uh, Child and Youth Care or so Social Awareness or something. It was, it was specifically for the youth of Romania and to largely deal with the, the orphan crisis. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so it's it's drastically changed. Yeah. They're used to, I think this documentary claims that there's about 20,000 orphans just kind of floating around. Yeah, that's what it said in the beginning. Yeah, I don't know if it actually meant the subways in particular or just orphans in general yeah. because by like 1989, there was like 170,000 orphans registered. Not <sighs> registered, but within the system of Romania right. of these orphanages. But divide that number by like... 700 mm -hmm. or even 800 or even a thousand that's that's a lot of kids per facility you don't oh, even see that sure. in canada or the united states yeah, or anywhere else in the world yeah. that, that number of kids being housed in a single facility yeah is pff, incomprehensible that's, that's like a small school yeah oh, that's, for sure and all of these kids have social and mental problems and they've got drug addiction sometimes but, Holy fuck. Yeah. And those facilities on top of that are obviously not well funded because there's a massive currency discrepancy yeah. between Romania and the rest of the goddamn world. Yeah. M most of the buildings from like the fifties or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> like Jesus. Yeah. They have the buildings, but they can't afford to keep them up. Oh yeah. This uh, group was working out of St. Catherine's right in Bucharest and uh, their building was one of the nicer ones. One of the biggest ones. Also one of the last ones left and it even looked like shit. Oh, Jesus. So, Dingy on the inside. One, uh, one Canadian dollar equals $3.14 of the Romanian loo. Let's go. Oh. Okay. What yeah. happens when you use the loo? Yeah. Your economy's still in the shitter. <laughs> <laughs> this is a podcast for <laughs> dumb <laughs> fucking jokes. Currency shit jokes. What <laughs> up? <laughs> so, like, it's like five-year high was, like, three... Oh, where is it? Man, I really want to go. We could go there for next to nothing. <laughs> One of our dollars is three of theirs. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Yeah, but what do you do when you get there? I don't know, buy a Coke. They got Coke, Coca-Cola there. That's true. Yeah, like their five-year high was like... Take a picture with one of these street kids. Or five-year low. get a cool Instagram post. Yeah, they're five year low, I guess. Me and Little Huff. Oh my God, Tyler's trying to say something. <laughs> Sorry. God damn it. One Canadian dollar was worth three uh, three thirty five. Okay, as a Ro five year high. Yeah. That's okay. Romanian loo. That doesn't actually mm. seem that bad, but in I know in reality that's insane. That means yeah. like a can of Coke costs you seven dollars. Uh, yeah. Guess back in twenty thirteen, it was three seventy three. Yeah, like how the fuck do you buy anything on the global market yeah. being? With Romanian money, you're just like... Uh, Man, you buy it on the unofficial market. You just... Black market. Yeah. You sell kids. That was one of the hugest... Whoa, uh, not hugest. For sure. Who the hell am I? So as the Romanian government was applying to get into the EU, they were sent an ambassador or rather like a... I don't want to say like a rapporteur, like someone to come in and file and report and critique their process of, yeah they did like a human's right thing of like how you yeah, guys run and shit yeah more or less it's not exactly yeah. like a un rapporteur but it's basically the same thing to enter the EU, eu to see if your citizenship yeah is sustainable mm -hmm. as a, an actual partner not as just a subject that we're gonna pay for um and this person i can't i can't remember her name but she was sent in she was a duchess i believe she was from the uk fairly affluent part of the uk too like water york downs and she implemented a lot of uh, the problems that still pervaded their child and youth department because she thought that uh, the international adoption situation, which was something kind of unique to the uh, Romanian people because they had to get all of these kids out, she saw it as instigating or at least facilitating uh, human trafficking specifically of kids. Uh, yeah. So she put a massive uh, plug on that yeah. leaking facet of their country. But I don't think that that has changed. I kind of think that ah. international adoption is still very difficult, if not actually legislatively impossible in Romania. And domestic do adoption, Romanians adopting Romanian children is also extremely difficult. Wow. You have to go through a, a much tighter and more, uh, <laughs> uh, like, 
tautological, like tediously roundabout yeah. uh, form filling out procession. So they just made that more strict with the fear of the child trafficking thing yeah, and so taking you, advantage. You legally adopt these children and then yeah. you just sell them. Yeah. Because you've legally Holy them, fuck. They don't have to register because their their child and youth social system is obviously very yeah. weak. It's just a skeleton at best. I was gonna say how loosey goosey was their system and they were like, Hey, you keep getting adopting kids, but where are they? Yeah, exactly. Don't worry about it, I'll take another one. Like, okay. <laughs> you just well, place it in order. There's kind of a there was part of that Bucharest report, there was a massive incentive to adopt some of these kids as foster kids. Because you got ninety six American dollars a month, Whoa. which turned out to be like two hundred thousand of their dollars, yeah. which yeah. is enormous. <laughs> that it was twice the minimum income per month. Oh, so then they just the Romanian average yeah. rate. Yeah, they just made it viable for people to do it. But yeah. Holy fuck, that's so depressing. This one was a slight bit different because it was in partnership with a study, so that money really did have to go towards. Uh, like housing these kids sure. forever. Oh, okay, okay. And that's. A I thought you meant before, like the government set up something of like, wait, what? Well, no, no, there wasn't. But, the yeah, government. yeah, yeah. But okay. that, they did agree, so that was a part of the ethical side of this, and that's kind of something that I wanted to talk about with this whole documentary was the ethics of just getting the footage. But in the Bucharest report from this uh, network research group, they partnered with the Romanian government because there was there was new leadership in there. Um, he was really looking to getting these kids out of institutions and into foster care. He thought that that was really important to uh, produce good citizens. So he was backing this program completely. Uh, they agreed to pick up the tab if these foster parents turned out to just not be good, if these kids had to be institutionalized again, mm. or for some fucking reason, if the study came back with the results that it's better to have kids in institutions they were willing to foot the bill to back it because if you're going to do research on these people, you probably should have uh, a real insight and drive to solving the problem in yeah. which you're studying about. So yeah. a lot of this too was to shatter the disillusion of psychology in Romania because this is obvious around the world. They don't really have to do this study of Romanian kids and poor early development this is a, this is a, what we know. This is just the fact of early childhood development right. is attention and care and touch and sociality, yeah, a absolutely. social life is really important. Absolutely, yeah. So this study didn't really need to be done, but it kind of did need to be done in Romania to get those political wheels moving. So in part, yeah, they did this study because they had a backup plan, and that backup plan was to continue to try to help these kids. Mm -hmm. Well, but that's good. That is an interesting point, though, because that's scientific methodology done ethically, because you can just do science, but you right. don't have to have the ethics behind mm -hmm. it. But it's a huge part of it when your science is based on a real-life historical phenomenon that won't last forever and is admittedly a rare and unique opportunity to capture real life data out in the world in and a semi-controlled environment that this is just a problem in a country and you can come in and just set up your measuring devices uh, just to get some recording but they had to have a plan uh, behind them right to like a safety net for these kids mm -hmm. that if the test failed they aren't going to continue to fall through the cracks so at one point, like it's near the end of the documentary, it says uh, the police raided the subway where all the kids were living. Mm -hmm. um, they took Anna and Marina, and basically the like state-run shelters won't keep the kid if they don't think they're um, rehabilitatable. Yeah, mm -hmm. rehabilitatable. Yeah. So they send Anna back to her parents, and they interview her after, and she seems to be doing well, and she says she's happy, and she's living with her parents and everything. Um, but then they took Marina because they said he could be re rehabilitated and put him in a state-run facility. So they split them up yeah. and didn't send the kid who they think was could still turn out okay yeah. uh, back to the parents. They kept the now we can still together. fuck you up a little bit mentally. You're going to stay with us, little buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
they uh, they did keep siblings together in this Bucharest report, which is kind of nice to do. Yeah, that's good. Because like they, you don't have to who split them. Uh, who was the one girl where they went to the doctor and the doctor's like, "No, nah, I'm not giving you medicine." That, that was Anna. That was okay. Anna, yeah. 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 <sighs> and so that was intense. But when you were telling it to me before, like I thought the doctor was just like, "No, fuck you," but the doctor's like, the doctor was actually really nice to her, and he said, "You you know." I'm going to give this to you, but you need to get clean. You need, yeah. You need to get off drugs. Because if I give it to you and you don't, this is a waste. Yeah. It's money, right? Yeah. And like, yeah. Yeah. I think she got it at that point. She was I guess like, it was just kind of blown away yeah. to me that like you have to have that conversation with someone that with, age. With a 10 year old kid. Yeah. Yeah. Like, listen, I'm going to give you Tylenol, but you better not be crushing this Tylenol up and fucking snorting it. And you're like, what? What is that? Like, yeah, don't just, be doing rails of this. Like, what? what yeah. You? Like, she's just like, she's, she's saying this to her to try and like, teacher yeah 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 um this yeah. whole fucking thing just blew my mind <laughs> oh, man it, like insane. i was just like what the fuck well, especially us you know coming from canada we don't see this kind of shit um yeah like oh. i mean obviously there's child poverty and child homelessness here um but not even to remotely that kind of extent right? i bet you <laughs> no never mind no whoa, whoa, whoa. go 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 no. go go fuck well, I mean, there's not as many kids on the street here because there's a huge underground pedophile ring, so we just pick them up. They're well housed. Okay. You didn't have to say we, but um, okay. Well, me and the guys. Right. <laughs> me and the guys. <laughs> okay, so next week it's yeah. just uh, oh, no. two dudes and a dog. Yeah. <laughs> two dudes and one guy incarcerated. So he's coming in remotely. Yeah. Dude. He's going to use his one phone call. Uh, <laughs> from now on, you're referred to as inmate 007. <laughs> Mitch, and I, seven. Mitch and I are turning Christian in. Yeah. <laughs> Well, now I'm super nervous because <laughs> they're going to find it. Yeah, okay, good point. Good point, man. Yeah. Well, All right, well, Romanian adults, I guess, maybe get their shit together. Yeah, otherwise yeah. I'm coming. It would be interesting, like Tyler said, to go do a doc there now because this stuff has been outlawed. Like, there was some law that was passed. But, I mean... There's always something new you can huff. Like, there's... It's probably... They're probably doing crocodilia or crocodile, yeah. whatever the fuck. Or they're just like, hey, we got cheap gas now. <laughs> Not with Pastor Crocodile on the continent. Yeah, yeah, he's he's just yeah. a border away. Like he, he can jump over into Romania. Yeah, don't do that. Da, 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 da. Yeah, teach them how to do crunches. He's got a bunch of Russian ears on his like on his hip. I'm like, oh Jesus. Let's do a follow up to uh, almost holy, almost holy Romania. Yeah. Oh no. Bring uh, bring Pastor Crocodile into uh, into Romania. In the oh, subway. that's what you mean. Oh, yeah. Okay, Maybe. I thought you meant like. He's a priest. They can just like free roam yeah. in between co like countries, right? As long as it's a Roman Catholic country. Yeah, like I don't uh, think that's a thing, but really? Oh, why not? Like a country with a designated religion? And no, I like know. like. Well, I mean, does the Pope have a fucking passport? Probably not. Yeah, I'm sure he does. You think so? You think so? Or like cardinals? They'd be like, dude, you think a normal person would dress up in well, this ridiculous red? Like I'm clearly. A cardinal. But then again, they need to restrict those dudes. So I don't know. I just don't know how I mean, higher up in the religion do you go where they're like, you don't need a passport anymore. You're cool. I don't think the Pope would. Well, you don't think he has a passport? I think the Pope has a passport. I mean, he's from Germany. I think this one's from Germany, right? Oh, he is. Right. Yeah, but pre, <laughs> pre, -pope? pre -po pre Pope. Yeah. <laughs> I, for some reason, I always imagine the Pope's growing up in the Vatican. See, no, see, I don't think they any... pick a one. They pick an old man, they fly him in. and they say, "Oh, the man, you are wet or white." I don't think there's technically any births in uh, Vatican. No, because we all uh, we all uh, put the things in the so, boys. Like their death rate way out. There. We are all the old <laughs> men that eat McDonald's and do questionable things with other people. There's a subway in the Vatican. Is there? Yeah. Yeah. We like yeah. a foot long. <laughs> oh. You'll never find. No, it. a six inch year. You get the fuck out with that. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why we're talking about that, but I was just like, yeah, I wonder. Yeah. The so if he's like a like, yo, I'm a crocodile priest man. They're like, all right, buddy, well, go let's through. Not, let's not get off that subject too quickly. Imagine okay. if the sandwiches at the subway in the Vatican are only six inch. It's like eh, everything is a little bit younger and smaller here. Do you know what they should have done? They should have just forced okay. Jared to work at that subway. Let's. Uh, uh, <laughs> no more pedophile talk. All right. <laughs> Sorry, Christian. Let's pick another documentary <laughs> then. Fuck. I got nothing. If this one's about pedophiles, like, I'm fucking coming after you. Yeah, let's just, <laughs> let's just break break that thing and, like, never again. Yeah. This is the last episode. Okay. 
But yeah, hope this needs to be something like because if we do an Eastern European doc, like I'm all seriousness. Like, can we pick something else? Because oh. I can't handle that fucking. We got lighthearted. Sick. We got lighthearted. Sick. The aristocrats. Oh fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Do you know? No. Chris, oh, fuck oh. yeah. So it's a comedy doc. <sighs> Dude, I told you a Gilbert Godfrey story about this. This is a documentary about a joke? This yes. is a documentary about a joke that huh. comedians don't know where the joke is from and comedians would tell each other backstage because it's shit that you could never say on stage. Because like you would like it would just murder your career because it's the most fucked up shit. I feel like I've murdered my career in this very episode. Yeah. Yeah, you did it in like a minute and four. Hour four? Hour four. Yeah, not bad. Not We've bad. been only at this for a minute. 64 <laughs> seconds. 64 minute, minutes. Yeah. Not bad. 64 seconds. I am not good with time. Uh, yeah. So I, I could do it though. Some comedians are like telling the history. Some tell the story of like the joke and some straight up just tell the joke. Oh man, it's great. Have you seen this one? Yeah, I have it on DVD. I, I, I've seen it uh, a while ago. Yeah. I, I haven't seen it in a while. It's last. so good. Dude, I got this documentary at a dollar store in Charlotte Lake randomly. Okay. Yeah. Cool. It was, it was a, it's such a cool documentary. A whole documentary? It's like a feature film, like an hour and a half? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. they just talk about the history of the joke and like no like, comedian really knows where it's from. And they just tell like funny stories or like, oh, the first time that like I heard the joke, like I'm just going to make up a story. But like I was in a comedy club and then like Rodney Dangerfield was like, hey, you want to hear a funny story, kid? And then he <laughs> told me the story or like other people are like just legendary comedians that were like notoriously clean. were like, yeah, I heard it from this guy. And like he just started saying the most fucked up shit. But we were all dying laughing. And then like, all right, now I got to go do my clean act. <laughs> so I think this is like where Bob Saget kind of like took the turn into like dirty, filthy comedian. He always was, but yeah, yeah he has a funny like, rendition too. Yeah. Like he was always like, well, yeah, before that, when he was doing stand up, I'm sure before Full House, he was probably like the filthy comedian. Even when he was doing Full House, he yeah. just had to be kind of like secret yeah, about it. But like when he was like America's dad, yeah. like in full, like during the Full House years. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And then when I saw this, I was like, the "Yeah, fuck? he he." <laughs> what happened to Bob Saget? Yeah, yeah, he says some shit in that. We were yeah. like, "Whoa, what?" Yeah. He's funny, man. Let's try and get Bob Saget on. Fuck, dude. Okay. I want yeah. Chip Chipperson. We need Chip. Is he in the documentary? <laughs> Jim Norton? No. Oh. Yeah. Chip Chipperson's Jim Norton's fucked up character. Gotcha. But I don't think he might be in it. I don't know. Wait, if he is, he'd be like young. Yeah, it's from 2015. So yeah, far. I thought it was. He would have been around, but I thought it was older than that. No. 2005 maybe 2005 makes more sense because yeah. i think i got this in like high school i got it before we graduated 2005, so yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 no it's good oh man it's so funny all right because it's just like yeah no one knows where this joke came from and it's so fucked up and then just yeah. how so many different ways you can go with it and yeah, then i think it's like a game of telephone like it, it, cha absolutely. it changes every time someone tells absolutely it. like your rendition could be completely different than my rendition can be completely different as tyler's but they're both could be like equally as funny and fucked up but it always is around this like one con like uh, one theme yeah yeah so next oh, week fuck uh, yeah i'm so stoked we'll learn about the aristocrats not the Disney movie. No. Jesus Christ, no. <laughs> That's the rest of cats. I know. <laughs> Just okay. making sure. We will uh, see you guys next week with some comedy. Dirty fucking so dead kid jokes. Hey, man. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. Remember uh, to follow us uh, on Twitter at Three Dudes Pod uh, for all your Three Dudes uh, podcast content.